Hello and welcome to the latest episode of the Two Robbies podcast, your destination for in-depth discussion and analysis of every single Premier League match week. I'm Robbie Musto and he's Robbie Earl. And yes, we are back. After a little summer break and then covering the Olympics, we are back in full-on Premier League mode, ready to preview the upcoming season. Elster and I have you covered with everything you need to know before the 2021-22 campaign kicks off on Friday. All right, my friend. Lovely mm -hmm. to see you. Lovely to see you. Good to you. be I've back, missed, my friend. I've good missed to you be back. back. Absolutely good to be back. And I've had to talk to the wife for the last three months. So <laughs> I'm, I'm glad to get Mr. Musto back in, in my life. And um, yeah, yeah. Is it? I think this pod's one of those, Rob, where there's so many <laughs> exciting storylines, backstories, possible good form, possible bad form, possible don't quite know what to expect form, that it's, it's almost like we, we need to section the table off into maybe the top four teams, which I think we all have a feel who and what those will be. Maybe yeah. the next level of team down, those that are going to maybe crack into that, you know, those two places below the top four. And then yeah. it's almost about best of the rest, isn't it? I mean, from there yeah. on in, isn't it hard to say who might finish eighth in the table and who might finish 18th? I mean, yeah. there's just so many clubs that could fit either of those spaces. Yeah. So let, let's do it this way, Rob. Let's do it in the in the in sense of let's have five. I think we've got five burning topics, big questions mm. going into this season. All right. And okay. let's start right at the top. The question number one I've got is: Can anyone challenge Manchester City for the title this season? Go, that's, Robbie Earl. That, that's the question. That's the well, first question. Question number one. I'm spoke to you for three months. Yes, is the answer. Yes, Robbie Musto. <laughs> because the, the, the chasing pack have got stronger. The chasing pack will be better. If Manchester City, who had a poor start last season, actually, didn't have to get, get off to, I think it was 12 points from, from a possible 24, and then went on that incredible run after the 0 0 draw with West Bromwich Albion where they went and beaten, I think, 21 games or competitions and 15 straight in the Premier League and pretty much done it, had it won then. If Manchester City don't start in the same manner and, and, and don't start with the right focus, we've seen teams win the league, Rob, off good starts. Liverpool did it, got off to a great start and the momentum kept going. I think mm. this year, if you've got any real ambition, I'm talking about United, I'm talking <laughs> about Liverpool, I'm talking about Chelsea, because those are the three teams I feel are going to chase it. If they get off to good starts and Man City don't, they've all got deep enough squads that they might be able to see this thing through. Yeah, I mean, I think from last season, Rob, City didn't start well, but were able to to get back and dominate the league. I think I agree with you, mate. I think, I think it's absolutely right. Also, important thing to remember, Rob, is that Phil Foden... And I think Kevin De Bruyne are not going to be ready to start the season. So in the same, and, and I think we're going to see this, and everybody should be ready for the first week or two, Rob. Yeah. Of players coming back from tournaments and 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 this, the travel and the uh, quarantine and etc. You're not going to see the very best teams immediately. But back to the point, you know, it's still important that, that these big t teams that want to win the Premier League get off to a good start and a flying start because I think you're right. I think we're going to see a, a title race. And we say it, we, we do say it quite a bit, mate. But when you think of the four teams, and we'll get into them over the course of this podcast and, of course, yeah. subsequent podcasts, mm. the, the, the four biggies at the top are, are really geared up. They're really geared up to win it, and they've strengthened, uh, and it's fascinating. But let's focus on Man City, Rob, and what they've yeah. done. Because the, uh, big yeah. news, big news, big news, big news mm. about Man City and Pep Guardiola. First of all, the disappointment of the Champions League <clears throat> loss uh, right at the end there um, against Chelsea, and the thought of... Okay, let's spend. Let's spend. Jack Grealish is a superb player. Yeah. Um, obviously, is going to enhance this squad. I'm going to mm -hmm. cut to a to a thing that I'm thinking, Rob, and I want to get your take on it. Right? Yeah. There's no point. We know all about Jack Grealish, and our listeners know all mm -hmm. about Jack Grealish. I just got. I just want to ask this, and and I've, I've been thinking about it a little bit. Do they really need Jack Grealish, Robbie? Is this a luxury for Pep? Pep obviously loves him as a player. Between Phil Foden, Bernardo Silva, Ryan Sterling, Riyad Mahrez, and I know he's a he's a superb player and he will make them back, but they did they really need him? And I know they're going for Harry Kane, but we'll get on to. 
Yeah. Would they be, would have been better, Rob, to to prioritise Harry Kane and maybe pay that little bit extra money that Daniel Levy wants? Would Kane have, and I think Kane would will make a, a bigger impact to this club than Jack Grealish will in terms of titles and winning things. Should they have prioritised Kane, and do they really need Jack Grealish? Good question. A um, hundred million pounds, so I don't know, somewhere in the region of $130 million for Jack Grealish. People are saying it's a, it's a record British transfer it, it is, is too much. What I would say, Rob, is if Pep Guardiola brings Jack Grealish under his tutelage and develops him into the player that he could be, it's great business. He's done it with, he's done it with, with um, Ryan Sterling, Rob. He's done it with Phil Foden, he's, he's developed. He's done it with Kevin De Bruyne, took him to another level. If he can take Jack Grealish to, the, to another level, where Jack Grealish becomes... And, and I was talking to a friend about this, and, and they're different players, so, so take what I'm saying. But Jack Grealish could have the effect on City that Kevin De Bruyne does, but he does it in a different way. Now, he's a dribbler, he, he encourages challenges, he wins free kicks, he, he's clever with his body movement. But I think there's another level for Jack Grealish of playing at top level with top players where you've got to put it in every week. That's what I'm not sure if Pep can get. If Pep gets that, good business, and I think a massive asset for Manchester City. Mm. I think when you talk about improvement, Rob, uh, I haven't got the actual numbers to hand here, but his goals mm. weren't great. You know, no. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking single figures for, for Premier League last year. That's That's an area where... That's the improvement that you're talking about, Rob. Mm. More production. Yeah. And to be yeah. fair, he he drummed that into to, to Raheem Sterling. You're Correct. seeing it with Phil Foden. We know how important goals are in midfield. More so has I, just I, chipped in with goals. Yeah. And, yeah. You know. So you're, I, I, I sense that you're more. I'm, I'm okay with it, Rob. I'm, I'm, course, I'm waiting to see. Of course, I'm okay, okay with it. it. It might be an indulgence, but I hear your point. But I just think if you can get. If he can take Jack Grealish up to the level we're talking about, where he's commanding games, where he's scoring goals, where he's assisting, where he's playing people through and all those things, I think it might be good business. Where does he and, play? And, and where do I play him off the left-hand side? Coming so where's Phil field? Foden playing? Where's Sterling playing? Well, Phil what? Foden might play as one of my next to the holding midfield players, one of my two eights, if that's the role. Or he can play off the right. Or Listen, this is Manchester City. We're in four competitions. We've got plenty of games coming up thick and fast. There'll be, there'll be enough games and enough roles for people. And, and under Pep, at times, you have to be good off the bench. You have to be good mm. with your attitude. The other one interests me, Robbie Musto, and I know we, we can't talk about things that haven't happened, but the big story over the summer was Harry Kane telling Tottenham he doesn't want to stay. We know Manchester City won him. We know they want to play the, the kind of money we're talking. Rob, if, if, if Man City land Harry Kane, should the other three even bother? <laughs> not really and, and, and it pains me to say it I mean if they get Kane as well my goodness because we know he guarantees goals in certain you know in, in games where they really need that against mm. teams that the bunker in he can score different types of goals um, so yeah obviously they're trying to get him Daniel Levy's playing hardball which I get but I still think you know, I'm sure there'll be a point, Rob, where we talk about Spurs, but like, yeah. move on, sell him. He wants to go. You're going to get over £100 million. Like, it's not doing Nuno Espirito Santo, the new manager, any favours. It's not doing his teammates any favours, Rob. It's not helping preparation for the new season. The money that, that w might come in, they won't have much time to spend it, Robbie Earl, in the transfer window if they wait and wait and wait and play mm -hmm. hardball and hardball to the end. Now, I might be wrong. And Levy might say, you know what? He's not going. I don't care what, what we've had, the conversation yeah. we've had. And what, uh, you know, 120, 30, I want 150 million pounds or he's not going. He might be a Spurs player next season, Robbie Earl. Um, yeah. But again, yeah, not going down the Spurs. One. Yeah, you sense an unhappy one, but it, it might be. Listen, uh, Harry signed a big contract that he's tied to yeah. three or four years and, and Spurs might yeah. say, you've signed a contract, you've got to stay. Yeah. It's interesting though, Rob, that, um, you know, for all that we talk about and, you know, my feeling for, for this player, 260 goals have gone out of that football club, by the way. 184 Premier League goals have gone out of that football club with a, with a certain Mr. Aguero no longer there. 
There's no reliance now on that. That's gone. Gabriel Jesus mm, has still got something to show. If Harry Kane doesn't come in the doesn't come in the door and they don't do striker business, ooh, now now we now we might be talking a challenge. Now yeah. we might be talking where another 20 goals gonna come through through this. Totally, to, totally agree, Rob. Ilkay Gundogan. Does it does he need to be the top goal scorer again? Maybe Jack Grealish. Can he be? Can he be the top goal? Was that one of those one-off seasons that people I think have, so. like things I drop for so. him? He has moments, and then he'll go back to four or five. Yeah, I, I just think, you know, again, it's way early yet, but but my initial kind of gut feeling is we we know Rob how hard it is to retain this Premier League title. We know how hard it is. We know the 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 blimmin crazy motivation they're going to have to win the Champions League. I just think right now, if they don't get Harry Kane over the line this summer window, mm. I think others are going to overcome them. And I know they're better with Grealish. And I understand mm. your point about they, they can get to a new level, him personally, and maybe yeah. with a team. I just think the strength of the others that we're going to go and talk about in a second, you know, I think they need another striker. I'm not sure midfield players can continue to do it. Could be totally wrong, and City might win it again. But I, that's my gut feeling right now. And, and I just want to throw one more in there, just before we move and talk about mm. who are the, the biggest challenges to, to City is if certainly if you get Kane, if you don't, maybe there's there's a slightly different argument. But we're starting to get the point, Rob, where the greatest manager in the world has not landed the trophy that he was supposed to land, the Champions League. He's got to a final, Rob, and everybody said, "Oh, it's done and dusted." And mm. he messed up. He messed yeah, up. He messed he played up. a false yeah. nine. He didn't play a holding midfield player and they got beat. Yeah. And if yeah. he starts amassing the kind of squad that he's got, the kind of money yeah. that he spent, and in the 10 years of dominance and five Premier League titles and League Cups and FA Cups, he doesn't land the big trophy, there'll be a question mark, Robin Musser. There'll be an asterisk. The people who don't like Pep will have reason to have an argument. Yeah, Barcelona 2011, the last time we won the Champions League, Rob. Mm. And uh, that's a long that's a long time with great teams. Yeah. And the, the final, and we don't need to go there, with the decision-making, the overthinking, the messing it up. Yeah, the squad that's coming into that club, mm. yeah, I think you're right. And I think the four big boys that we're going to talk about quickly here, who, who I think the champion's going to come from the four, Whoever doesn't finish in the top four is the managers under pressure, whoever it is, whoever it is. And that's what makes this season a fantastic top four title challenge because of what's happened this summer, because of what's happened last season. Um, and let's get into that, Rob. Let's get into the first other club. Manchester United, Robbie Earl. Yes, They're the sir. next ones we're going to talk about. Yes, and I, don't, I don't think I need to remind our listeners and viewers of what happened this summer, but Jade and Sancho, mm. they finally got their man and finally got a real talent to play on the right side of their midfield, an area of the team that's being like the ugly stepchild, mate. N nobody's mm. really wanted to play there, apart from Dan James, but they've got him. And, of course, Rafa Varane. He's, I think he's almost done it. Is it still medicals and quarantining? But yeah, I think he's pretty pretty much much done. done. I think, yeah, he, he's quarantining. I think just got back to training. Um, so is that the missing is that the missing pieces, Robin Musto? Are we now saying Manchester United title contenders? Is that what you're, you're trying to Oh, definitely. 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 Title I mean, I think, well, that's Let's obviously that. The, I, yeah, I still yeah. don't quite think so, right? But they mm. probably... They sh this squad, I would say, right, and it, 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 we'll get on to it, but this squad is a title-winning squad, squad mm. Rob, isn't it? Now, in mm. an ideal world, Man United fans might... Well, one place. Well, one place. What? Okay, so in an ideal world, they might want another classy central midfield player. Correct. And and maybe, a, you know, we're not sure Cavani with his age is going to yeah, go. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I mean, you go through the side, Rob. There's some oh. pretty great options everywhere, like like international world class players in midfield and in wide areas. Uh, you know, with Cavani and Bruno Fernandez, and I and think Nelson every Schoen unit is, is, is title worthy. Every unit, although I would say let's sort the goalkeeper out, but let's say it's De Gea that starts back four unit with Wan Bissaka. I know they're looking at Trippier with Varane. Yeah. I'm okay. Luke Shaw's 
stepped yeah. up, gone to another level. Maguire similar. Yeah, it's really good. Let me really let me good. go ahead of them to your attacking three, possibly, or with your Bruno, with your Rashford, with your Sancho, with your Greenwood, with Martial and, and Cavani up, up top. All good. Yeah. Holding midfield players, if I'm playing a 4 2 3 1, Robbie Musto, not good enough. The holding midfield players don't get in any of the other top four teams. Nowhere near. Not what if you enough. played? I'm just going to interrupt you. What if you played one of them? And I totally agree with that. Yeah. One of them. Yeah. McTominay, with, yeah. And with Pogba. Can okay. you? Get Pogba Am I going to gonna get play? the season's work? Well, we, we, we're going to be. <laughs> this, this, this is pod content. Pogba next to a holding. Oh, he doesn't hold. Oh, he doesn't uh, know how to defend. Oh, well, 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 so that's where well, it's well, slightly unbalanced. And when yep. you've got Pogba and Bruno, I'm hearing some people say, well, could we do a 43? One holder with those two. To win the title, you've got to have that intensity in midfield, that working off the ball, that pressing, that, that other stuff that comes, not just your goals. That's the bit that worries me for Manchester United. Mm. Yeah, it is. But but I would say, Rob, and I can't think of an example right now, two getters in the middle of the park yeah, with, with a ton of talent around it. I still... Yeah. I, know, I, I hear you, because you know what I was thinking to... of? And go up contain Danny Drinkwater at Leicester in that. Yeah, but there you go. Well, they there won it. They weren't there you go. yours, they, but they found a way and they got the the their things. Yeah. I just don't know. Manchester United, I just... Ugh. Yeah. I don't know. Is, is, is that... If they... To me, Rob, and, and, and again, I know we're talking to my thingy. If I could plug Declan Rice in there, if I yeah, could plug well, Calvin Phillips in there, if I could yeah. plug Eve Basuma yeah. in there, or yeah. in Wilfred Ndidi, let's yeah. go. Let's go. Yeah. Let's go grab a title. Yeah. And that yeah. might be the next stage. Yeah. And you know what I was thinking as well? Like, again, why I'm not, I'm still not sold that, that they can win it. And I'm sorry to go over old ground. It's the manager. And I was thinking, you know, <laughs> actually, actually this morning, when you think of the, the, the Premier League champion managers, Robbie Earl, hmm. what th there's a difference. There's a there's a nasty, forcing, pushing, driven, fear factor uh, hmm. streak in all these guys. And go, um, okay, Jose Mourinho drives, yeah. pushes, nasty, pushes his team over the line. So Alex Ferguson, of course, Antonio Conte. Jurgen Klopp, you know, there's, yeah. there's a, there, yeah. when, when it, whenever you Pep Guardiola drive, 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 you. drive, yeah. is, is Ole Gunnar Solskjaer capable, Rob, of taking of going second to first, like the Europa League final? Mm, he couldn't get yeah. them over the but, line. Yeah, I know the, the, the Europa and, League is a worry, and and if if they don't win a title, this team needs to win something. By the way, this this yeah, group ready needs to, to win. win some silverware. Ready to win. But I would say Claudio Ranieri would be, uh, yeah. Uh, you know, he had his ways, he yeah. had his isms, but he found a way with his team that with his team that had drive and, and had a real yeah. hot, hot but, and I, I, know don't what know, saying, I don't know about Ranieri. I, I, I don't know about Ranieri. But at I, times, I, I, I think behind you know, away from the camera, I think. Yeah, he, and I wonder if behind the scenes, maybe Ollie's got a bit of that. He doesn't have to maybe. show. You don't have to just shake your fist and that. You could do it in your own way. So mm. I'm going to give him a little bit more leeway on that one, but. We're getting to the point, Rob, where he's got to start to deliver. When he's starting to spend the money that he is, when he's been back now as a Manchester United manager, when we're yeah. not questioning is Oli the guy or not, he's the man in charge. He's been yeah. backed with the kind of players he wants. Now yeah. it's time to start delivering. Yeah, and a, an important thing to mention here, and I want to mention it, is that we must remember Jurgen Klopp, Rob. He he yeah. he lost a lot of finals. He yeah. you know there was questions about Jurgen Klopp when he got to finals and and they were losing. That mm. was on, on the way to winning. And United, yeah. Man United fans might listen to this and say, you know what, we're on the way to winning. And yeah. the, the, the players that have dropped in, again, big money, big time players, I tell you, good signings. And it's one thing that's happened really well over the, the span of Volga and Solskjaer is the signings. And they've sorted yeah. that yeah. out. Yeah. And, and every, you know, almost everyone has been very useful. And in Varane, world-class mm. defender, Rob. World-class defender in his peak. That's I had the, the argument, is Varane there, Van Dijk? Is he the piece that cements a lot of other things all around the football club? Well, that's the other thing, Rob. Van Dijk goes to Liverpool, centre-back, they win. Yeah. Ruben yeah. Diaz, centre-back, yeah, goes, goes to Man City, City. they win. Mm. Is this the United part of it? So, yeah. absolutely, they are in They are in it. They are really, really in the title race, and it's going to be fascinating to see how we go. So, Virgil van Dijk, we believe, is, is, is back fit, certainly. He's back training. I'm um, not sure how much match time he's had in, in the friendlies, but back. 
Joe Gomez is back. Um, Joel Matip is back. Yep. And I believe Ibrahim Kanate is, is now part of the, of the back four as well. I mean, that's going from struggling to category B minus to having your A plus guys back there plus one and yep. should make Liverpool better, Rob. Should get Liverpool closer. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're, of course... Jorginho Wijnaldum left the football club. So that's, yeah. you know, gone to PSG. Um, they've not got a bad team, have they? PSG, their team's not bad. <laughs> anyway, uh, but Canote is an exciting looking player, Rob. Looked at a mm. lot of video of him, a lot of clips of yeah. him, and he looks, wow. I mean, he looks Listen, really, yeah. really good. He looks, you know, very composed on mm. the ball, brings it out, looks a million bucks. Um, <clears throat> no question. The starting 11 for Liverpool is brilliant. Mm. Brilliant starting 11, particularly with everybody fit. Of course, it's going to be different. I think the concern, a couple of concerns to Liverpool, first of all, they don't get too many injuries. I think when we consider the other squads, Rob, and the players they've got and the size and the depth of the squads, Liverpool's, for me, talk about Shakiri going, you know, Origi, you know, maybe Milner comes in to, to, to cover certain places. I don't think the squad, Nico Williams, the squad isn't as good. <clears throat> but if they stay fit, and it should be easier without so many games pushed together like last year's COVID congested season, they can have a run as well. And I'm assuming that you like some Mo Salah, Sadio Mane, Bobby Firmino, right? And the manager and the whole team are ready to, you know what I'm going to say, Stephen Gerrard, are they ready to go again? Because yeah. they, are not, they, don't, they don't owe it to anybody, but I think the Liverpool fans are like, okay, can we regroup and go again? Can we? Mm. From the manager, to the players, to those goal scorers, because if everybody's fit, again, with that 11 that play to their best, it's still a very, very good team. And and, and there's a couple of points that, that I wanted to bring, bring up off that. My worry with Genie going, and it's a worry that was there while he was there, but even more so now he's gone. Goals from midfield, Rob. There isn't, there isn't a look where I think there's anybody... Eight to ten goals from midfield. They've never, they've never had that. They've never. They've had never, that. They've never well, had well, that's something you might need to to add to your group, Rob. Because it, as we've seen, if those front three, and I'm going to add Jogo Jota in there because it's a front four now, yeah. and he was a big yeah. miss last season. Yeah, but he's, he's, I, I was, fit. he's fit, so that gives me all different kind of options. Yeah. I can play in a different way, and it does give me a little bit of depth, and maybe can rest. The question I was going to ask Rob, and I was trying to think about it in in, in a kind of sort of mature way. Have we have we seen like a front three like this front three who've been outstanding for probably five years as they've come together and Mo Salah has been the goal scorer and Mane and Firmino have all, all done their part. Have we seen a three stay together this long without you know generally a manager changes the chemistry doesn't he ticks one out and 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 then we see a bit different or changes a winger or a wide player or do you know, is is there a is there a chemistry little thing about hmm. Too, not, too much, Rob. Are you thinking too much together? Yeah. Can you can you spend too much together? Teams get to know. Can can it become a little bit samey? Hmm. Do you know what I mean? I, yeah. I just wondered whether there was a way that we sold one and we got one in of, of, of similar quality, but it brings hmm. a different chemistry. Yeah, I think obviously the Jota thing is something a little bit different. Yeah. May, yeah. Maybe Liverpool, Jurgen Klopp might think of a different way of playing, Rob. You know, yeah, I think people have got used Four, to... Two, three, one, yeah, they've yeah, they got this a, a this few this different ways this. of doing it. Yeah. I, I, I do think, and there's still time in the window, and of course we're mm. recording this when there's a, there's a few weeks of the window left. I, I would say another attacking player would be would be a, yeah. a really yeah. interesting boost to the squad. But I think, mm. you know, sometimes... And they, of course they've, they've made, you know, one in Ibrahima Konate, the defender yeah. Um, yeah. from RB Leipzig. But I think another attacking player would be good. I just, you know, it doesn't look like they've got the money to spend like some of the other ones are spending right yeah. now. I just think the point is with them, again, they are in it for me. For me, they're, oh, they're in it. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's such an important thing that, uh, and the point I want to make, that the defenders being back, and I didn't realise the point, and Danny Higginbottom drew on it a couple of times, is that when that midfield can press properly with Fabinho and with Henderson and they can play the game, Liverpool are a different team. Because they can keep the game in your half, they can play in intensity, they can put yeah. a, a kind of a, a thing on you. A lock because on at the you. back as well, yeah, we, we're quite prepared to go one on one, and we're decent. We've got this nice. When Henderson or or uh, Fabinho were in the back four, and they didn't have that legs in midfield, and they couldn't keep teams. 
they were more exposed. And I just yeah. think those people yeah. coming in at the back does yeah. helps that midfield, yeah. which allows them then to go and do what they do best at, yeah, at the top end of the pitch. Maybe we'll see a Fabinho, a Henderson and a, a Thiago in midfield. Yeah. They played you know, once together last season. Is that, I, is that I all it was? One game. Right. Right. Yeah. So that, I mean, that gives, that's got a little bit of blend of all things in yeah. midfield. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, it, listen, I'm, I'm sure Liverpool aren't going to be that much different. It's just they're back to full strength. Mm. And I think yeah. uh, Van Dijk has is, is, is been playing Rob as he pre season. Yeah, I don't know whether he, he might not, not sure whether he'd be ready to start. Yeah. yeah. And, and um, that might be a good thing. The other thing I'm just thinking about that football club, just quickly on that, Rob, it looks like, again, we went to Liverpool the year before they won the title and we were training ground and that. Looks like there's a bit of mojo back. The manager looks happy. I thought he was exhausted at Piers last mm-hmm. season. All that was going on with, with COVID, I think he had problem, his, his mother, his injuries, his team not playing so well. Mm-hmm. Just think he's he's revitalised and he comes again. And when he comes, Rob, his team's coming with him. Yeah, and, uh, you know, a quick, successful start for Liverpool. Mm. With fans back at Anfield and yeah, them, them getting some momentum could be could be a really interesting season for Liverpool absolutely. as well. Let's talk All about right. a possible dark horse to win it for me, Robbie Muster. Mm. Chelsea Football Club. Who are in the habit un, un, a little bit unlike, <laughs> let's say, Ollie at the moment. They're in the habit of winning things. We we've seen um today, just before we got on, on the podcast, they played in the Super Cup against Villarreal, who obviously beat Manchester United in the Europa League final. They go 1-0 up, they concede a bit sloppily, go to 1-1, it ends up in penalty kicks. Really interesting as we get to, after extra time, penalty kicks, that the manager changes Edward mm. Mendy. Two minutes from the end, wasn't it? Yeah. Kepper to go in the thing. The first time Kepper has to deal with, with anything in the game is the penalty kicks. Kepper comes up, makes a save in the end, Chelsea win the cup. This guy's all business, my friend. This guy's about winning, and people talked about whether PSG can be abrasive and difficult, not getting the ownership group. I like him. In fact, I love him. I think he's brilliant for the game. I think he's brilliant for Chelsea. I heard him today, the, the, uh, one of the reporters asked him before the game about, you know, the, the match and my importance and that. And he said, yeah, every game's important. And he said, you know, I take it serious. He said, and my players better take it serious. This yeah. guy ain't for messing around, man. But, uh, but back to my point, Rob, five minutes ago. He's a driver. He's a pusher. He's a winner. He'll push. I looked at him in the huddle, Rob, of the penalties, and he mm. was like this. Well, him. Him. Yeah. He, he, he's telling him. Like, obviously, we can't see mm. what he's, but, he, but mm. everybody's everybody's transfixed what he's saying. He is. He's got that that fire to push his team, and that's what you know. Is I think is important. Um, yeah, I mean, the team in the super in the super uh, cup final yeah. is, was very different, and again. Yeah. Like people are coming back, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. The team will, but it, that Chelsea team, it, it's a deep squad, Rob, cool. to win the Champions League. They finished fourth, by the way. They kind of yeah. scraped in, didn't they? They yeah, kind of yeah. scraped in a little bit. Uh, but mm-hmm. let's go over the, the transfer dealings as we see it right now, Rob. And, and people that have left the club, Livy Giroud. There's talk about Tammy Abraham going to Roma. Not done yet. But he was involved in the Super yep. today. Billy Gilmore's gone on loan to to Norwich City, which is probably Norwich, good yeah. for, for, for Gilmore yeah, for both parties. Um, yeah. And then, of course, on the other side of it, incomings, it looks like Romelu Lukaku, Robbie Earl, is going to sign from or after two excellent seasons in Serie A mm. with Inter Milan. It looks like he's just going through the medical stuff right now and different parts of the medical. It looks like he's going to be just short, well, 90-odd million pounds to bring him back to the club that he didn't really, with Didier Drogba being there, uh, reach his full mm. potential, obviously. He went on, other than that, to, yeah. to Everton and yeah. Manchester United that didn't seem so bothered to sell him to Inter Milan. And now he's come back to Chelsea on the brink of it. Uh, I get a feeling you're thinking like me, my friend, where this is such a great signing given. Great signing. Really not, signing. Not, not just what, but, but how he, how he differs from everybody else, Rob. Yeah. You know, he's yeah. a great center forward and in a, mm. in a world-class center forward. And he scored goals everywhere, even at Man United, but he's so different. And when you put him at the focal point, with all those number 10s, that creativity, the options, I mean, I, I tell you, big time. I, and, I, and, and I think it's important to say he's a different Lukaku than we've seen in the Premier League. I started yeah. to just, you start looking into things. Yeah. I think 64 goals he scored in his two seasons in Italy. He, he, he had 11 assists last season from open play. 
he's, he's, he apparently obviously likes to drift out to that right hand side at times and it allows space for those number 10s to run in. His build up play is better. He, he joins people in. He wants to be part more of a footballer. He works at his game. He's 28 years of age. He's got something to prove. He said he's got unfinished business. I just think it's 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 plug in and play. But I say, must you know? I love that one with yeah. me. He's a plug in yeah. and play guy. What I would say is, I think he will. I think he has a chance to be the Golden Boot winner because this yep. team create so many chances. Yeah. My yep. worry is, my worry is, oh, we've got the goal scorer now, and uh, everybody else still got to do your bit. Yeah. Mason Mount's got to get more goals than, than he does. He, he, he's a good player. Kai Havertz scores important goals, got to get more than he does. Timo Werner has got to get double. We, everybody else can't, can't relax because we've got the centre forward in, Rob. They've still got to keep getting goals from other areas of the pitch. Those wide players, those number 10s. And that's just as important as getting the guy at the top of the pitch. I, I tell you what, like, of course, in terms of ways of scoring goals, we know that Lukaku is going to help when mm. Chelsea dominate, which they do yeah. a lot. Yeah. They do a lot, and that's going to make a big difference. I got to say though, when when Chelsea do need to defend, I remember thinking and watching Lukaku really closely when he was at Everton, Robert. I think we did mm. some analysis of him. Can you imagine what they're Chelsea are going to be like on the counter attack? Yeah, because counter. Lukaku comes alive on a counter attack yeah, because he loves yeah. to run in behind, Correct. and you've got uh, uh, Timo Werner and Lukaku. Mm. On yeah. a counter attack, maybe that, splitting that, those uh, one left side, one right oh, side. Yeah, I mean that's that's really, really, yeah. yeah, potentially great for them when there are games when they play on a counter attack. But again, most of the time they dominate, dominate, dominate. And I'm not a big fan of these new new age kind of stats, Rob. But I did look at some expected goals. Yeah, uh, with Chelsea and the I difference the between thing. did you between actual yeah. goals. Yeah. And it's kind of a bit, it's like, they, so basically they created a lot of great they're expected, Their expected goals are more than their actual goals. Yeah. Which but, is really but, unheard of for a big team. Yeah, but yeah. So like, okay, we're, we're creating good chances. Yeah. We're not we're scoring not them. the goals. Yeah. This, this is what he's good at, isn't it? He gets yeah. his numbers of goals. So, yeah. I mean, I, I think I think the only thing, Rob, the, the Erling Haaland rumours about Chelsea going mm. for him, the Dortmund striker, of course, that everybody wants. Yeah. Maybe, maybe they've had a steer from him or his people that Chelsea wouldn't be his preferred option and they've gone oh, for Lukaku because maybe. you know I, I just you know two months ago I think we're thinking Chelsea are going to go all out to get Holland, um and he would be the best option on the planet for the team for me that he would still be the best option but maybe they've got a steer it's not going to happen Lukaku's the next yeah. best bring next him in best. yeah wanted to come unfinished yeah. business in the Premier League I think it's great business, great business all around. Well, yeah. it's, it's interesting what we think, but we've had our, our friends at uh, Points Bet Sportsbook have a look at the odds uh, to win the Premier League title. And it goes, my friend, in this order Manchester City minus 150, Chelsea plus 500, Liverpool plus 500, Manchester United plus 800. So. Many people good, think good, that, good value. Yeah, that, that's yeah, that's good value I mean, in, in United for me, by the way. Really good value in United. Yeah, well, they're all good value. I just think Chelsea at plus 500 is good value. Maybe these odds, Robbie Earl, at minus 150, is thinking that Harry Kane's going to go. Harry Kane goes, yeah. I wonder by the time we get to the end of the window, the end of this yeah. month, uh, whether those odds will change a little bit. Yeah. 150. Yeah. Mm. But it's good value. I, mean, I think it's, it's going, going to be closer. closer. I, I think it's going to be a bit closer than, than they yeah. think at the moment. Mm. Yeah. I mean, if people want to jump on now and take some of those odds, that's pretty good odds. Yeah. Particularly yeah. For, for me, particularly for Chelsea. And, and you know, actually get off to a good start, plus 800, I tell you. If they get yeah. momentum going, Manchester United, with the fans and with all the more what we got going, I know. I know. it could be interesting, my friend. I know. I know. All right. On to question number two, Robbie Earl. Question two. That was a long question one. I know. I know. Um... Can Leicester Spurs or Arsenal challenge for the top four? Now, let's start with Leicester City. They just mm. missed out again last year, Rob, on the yeah. last day, wasn't it? Yeah. Uh, fifth yeah. last, last day, yeah, because of Chelsea. Yeah, Chelsea knocked them yeah. out and they got the spot and, and they finished fifth. Um, notable sign. I just go through the notable yeah. signings of Leicester yeah. City. Patson Dacca from yeah. RB Leipzig. Yeah. Like yeah. I, like, yeah. I like the look of that signing. Babakari Sumari from Lille. Yeah, and Ryan Bertrand, an interesting yeah. one, a free transfer from Southampton. Notable depart departures: uh, Christian Fuchs and Wes Morgan, um, that that weren't really that key to them last season, anyway. 
Uh, what do you think, Rob? What, what, what do you think in terms of Leicester's ability to go again? <laughs> Good scouting, great manager, great ownership. Three combinations that give you a chance. Yeah, yeah. Leicester City are the top four plus one. By the way, anyone else? Anyone doesn't have a have a have a, good, uh, have a consistent season? This team are good enough to be to 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 to, to mix it in there. Now, Europa League football, they're going to contend with. So, some Thursday, Sunday stuff that they might have to deal with and whether that will affect and where the focus is. But with what they've got, Rob, with the recruitment, with the manager and the options with which he can play and the way that different ways he can play, they, they've got a chance for Fauna injury in, in the um, in the preseason is a real blow. Yeah, but it's a real blow to a guy that, leg. Yeah, which, you know. We don't know when we'll see him. It, it, it's probably going to be closer to, to Christmas than before. Uh, but, yeah, that's a, that's a real shame. But Leicester City, Rob, uh, uh, won the title in 2015-16, and it's almost fueled the ambition of the football club. It's didn't like we've won the title. Oh, that's it. It's like this team just want to keep going and going. And um, I think, it, again, they'll, they'll be in and around that top four. Yeah, I, I, I think... I don't think they're going to challenge this year for top four, Rob. I think, given what we've just talked about, that four is pretty strong that we've just had in the, in the last question there. And I think they've all upped their up their game, up their squad. Mm. Um, I think Leicester fans might be a little nervous that James Madison doesn't go because there's talk about yeah, him as yeah, a big Arsenal, target yeah. of Arsenal. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think we talked earlier, Rob, about the importance of a good start. I looked at the injury list for Leicester already. We know about Wesley Fafano. It's going to be out for a long time. Uh, still, John um, Evans is out. James Justin is out, Rob. Timothy Castagna is out. You know, that's that's a lot of defenders on the injury list straight away. So I I, I don't fear for them, but I, I just don't think we're going to see them pushing as hard as they did really? the last couple of seasons, given given the others. And, uh, you know, the, 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 the thing that, that Pat Sundaka is, is interesting. Yeah. He's a young, yeah, these goals, hungry... Yeah. I think he was the uh, the, Bund the Austrian Bundesliga player Austrian, of the year. Yeah, twenty-seven goals, Robin, twenty-eight appearances or something. Yeah. So he's a, he's a hot, hot striker that I think is going to be really exciting, and it might just be another Leicester City little find. Well, no, mm. maybe not find because people know about him, but they're the ones that often buy the players when they are the, the, the other teams wait for the finished article. They go in there and buy him. Like they did with uh, Fafana and many many others. So Daka is a, is a a reason yeah, it's a good business, yeah. yeah. But I, 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 I just think, and I hear you, and, and I get the injuries and whether, you know, the, the challenges of Europa and not. But I think Brendan's smart. I think players will be coming back, their injuries, but they don't last for, forever. Some yeah. will take longer yeah. than others, but they'll increase. They can get off to a decent start, Rob, and, and being in and around that top six yeah. after five, six weeks of the season. Yeah. I just think they're okay. I think there's a mentality of that football club that I like that, you know, we're, we're, we're gonna we're gonna burst into this top four, you know, Arsenal and, and, and Tottenham. You know, you can stay down there. We, we're now yeah. the, the new breed. Yeah, well, that's interesting because actually the two mm. teams that we talk about in, in this question, Robin, who can challenge? Yeah. We talked about Leicester City. Mm. Let's go on to Spurs, Rob. If you're okay with that, um, finished yeah. seventh last season. Oh blimey, where do we start with their summer? Ooh. Where Ooh. do we Ooh. start? Uh, the first, I'm like, there's a lot here, by the way, Rob. The first thing is the manager, and yeah. I'm going to I'm going to go through the names that didn't take the job. <laughs> Nangles Mum was an early uh, person that they, they couldn't persuade to come to the football club. Since then, we've had Brennan Rogers, Antonio Conte, we have Fonseca, we have Gattuso. There was big talk, you know, in the middle of the summer that Pochettino was going to come back to the football club, Rob, and mm. they settle on, a, and I'm going to say a solid choice in Nuno Espirito Santo. Before everything else about players and all that, what do you think to the way the club has handled the manager situation and what do you think to Nuno for Spurs? I think, I think you missed out Earl and Musto. Didn't you get the call from Daniel <laughs> Levy to see if we wanted it as well? I'd say, to be I honest, did. got yeah. another season left in, in the studio and bet to yeah. let us go. Um, yeah. But yeah, I mean, this isn't, the, this, this isn't the big six job how Nuno wanted it. Nuno had to take it. It was it's like David Moyes being given the Manchester United job. Yeah. You can't refuse it because it might never yeah. come around again. But it ain't the way you want it. It ain't in the in, in the shape you'd want it. This is a football club, Rob, that again, this season is, is going to be fascinating. They could be part of the top six, or they could be 16th in the league. <laughs> I'm telling you, 
If Harry Kane goes, they don't buy, they don't spend the money or Daniel Levy decides with all the money they've lost over the pandemic in the stadium, they, they hold the money back. This team is, is very, very different for, for, from, from where they were. There isn't too many players, Rob. You'd, I saw something the other day about uh, the Lamella. That I think he was the last of the bail money. And, and it had a list of, of Spurs players oh, yeah. who'd been bought oh, yeah. during the bail money and all that. Hmm. And every player on there, ball one or two, Rob, you, you're still thinking, is he any good or not? Hmm. You don't know. I don't. Spurs players at the moment, there's very few. I hang my hat on and say, I'm good with him. He's top six. He's with me. I think you're being a little bit, a little bit unfair there. A little bit. I, you know, I think let's just go through the the, the signings, the, the transfer business so far. Christian Romero, Rob, and yeah, this actually it reminds me of something yeah. else I got, we've got to mention from mm-hmm. Atalanta. Uh, mm-hmm. Brian Hill, that I from Sevilla, that I yeah, played, commentated yeah. on for yeah. Spain in the Olympic Games. So I've seen plenty yeah. of, of Brian Hill. Mm. Uh, notable departures: Lamella, Alderweireld, uh, Danny Rose, Juan Foyt went to Villarreal. That just yeah. just playing in the uh, Super Cup there. Um, so that's the that's the player business so far. Yeah. Of course, the Harry Kane thing hangs over the football club. And there's there's obviously money there that again I'll say it again, don't wait 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 just to get an extra few million and then waste the yeah. window to bring in replacements. Really difficult for the manager. Mm-hmm. Fabio Paratici, Far- Fabio Paratici, a new director of football into Tottenham Hotspur. Yeah, from Juventus from just over a decade at Juventus, Rob. And I had a good look at this guy and what he's done there. He did a pretty amazing job at Juventus, Rob, over a long period of time. He hired a unproven Antonio Conte. He brought in yeah. an agent, Andrea Pirlo, that did an amazing job. He oversaw the signing of Cristiano Ronaldo. He went and picked up Paul Pogba for free for Man United and sold him back for 100 million euros. He yeah. was a big part of their success of getting back to the top of Italian football and getting really long way in, the, in European football as well. He's a, a, a machine, they call him, a workaholic director of football that, that never stops trying to improve the squad that he's working for right now. We've already seen the link with uh, Italian football clubs, Romero, and there's mm. somebody else like that. It's not on my list here, but I know there's another player from Italian football. I think that he's brought in as yeah, well. Yeah, they've got another Atalanta kid, haven't they, or something? Yeah, another it's, Atalanta yeah. signing. Um, uh, Gallini, but, this Pierluigi Gallini. Oh, it's the goalkeeper. It's the goalkeeper. Yeah. So, so the, yeah. So goalkeeper and a centre back from Italian football. Yeah. I think you're yeah. going to see more of that. And listen, I'm not saying he's going to do the same things that Juventus that he did at Spurs. But if there's going to be a hundred odd million pound rob instead of the mm. list that you just talked about that came in and didn't really do it for Spurs over a long period yeah. of time. Maybe Parachichi has got better contacts and will bring better players in. So there's kind of a lot of doubt about, about Spurs, Rob, but I, yeah. I just think at least they've got a joke to football now, Rob. L- less of Daniel Levy in the market mm. has got to be better for the team. And I think that's going to take time and patience, but let Paratici do his thing with his recruiting and they might pick up some good players. Listen, I, I can't deny that, that you know, it's a good move, director of football, something they needed. They've got to start to understand. But again, Rob, you've got what 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 do what do Spurs look like under Nuno? We've seen Spurs under Poch that that got to a certain level, played great football, but couldn't yeah. get it done. We see football under Jose that's a little bit more pragmatic, holding back, doesn't suit the players, they're not don't seem happy, ends up going. What's new? You know, Nuno at times was very counter-attack based with, with with his Wolves team who sat back. That isn't what Spurs are going to be about, players or fans. And fans are going to be back in the stadium now and fans will have their, let their voice be heard. Yeah, I just hope the fans are patient with Nuno, Rob, because mm. I think in terms of that scale, I think Nuno is close to Jose. We know yeah. he's all about discipline and organisation and shape mm. of the side. My, my main doubt, Rob, with him as a manager is I think we know that some of the players in his dressing room... Um, can be a little bit flashy, a little bit big time. Are they going to respect Nuno enough, Rob, to do stuff they don't really want to do in, in a, in a yeah, defensive yeah. side of things? It looks like Deli Ali's is back in the good books. He's played, mm. I see, he played in the last game pre-season, in the preseason yeah. before the season starts the weekend. So maybe, you know, and Hyomin Son has been scoring goals mm. for fun in preseason, playing as a centre forward. So, I, I, you know, it's still got some decent players there. I know you By went the way, Harry there. Kane could well be playing. They talk, he, he could, could start against Manchester City at the weekend. Which... I know, I know. So I just hope he gets time, Rob, and patience yeah. because it is, it is a I think it's going to be an interesting one. Really interesting watch this yeah. season. Uh, yeah. Tottenham, Nuno, and Harry Kane, and the rest of the story. 
let's talk about the other North London club, Rob, because the other team I think it's a, it's a really huge season for is Arsenal and Mikel Arteta. I think we've said over, over the period well, that, you know, people were saying that, you know, you've got a certain pass or, you know, COVID and the, the, what he inherited and what he's bought. But I think he starts being judged on more of his group now. Starts being judged a little bit more now. Ben White was a, is, is a big move. It's a little pricey, but I think he's good business. I like him. I, I think like he him. had something, got good personality, great athlete. Can play in a number of positions, but I'd like to see him at centre back out ideally. Good on the ball, Rob. Great on the yeah, ball. Yeah, can play. We'll start the playoff at the back, which we know Arteta likes. And it, see, in a strange way, I was a little bit more the other way, maybe where you're giving a little bit more leeway to Spurs. I look at Arsenal, and I was thinking about it, Rob, and I, and I thought, You've got Saka Smith Rowe, you've got Cheney who's just signed a new contract, you've yeah. got this uh, Martinelli, Tavares has come in, uh, apparently a left sided player who can maybe allow Cheney to come in. Yeah. You've got Ben White, you've got a lot of sort of 22, yeah. 20, 22, yeah. 23, 24. Yeah. Then I mix that with Aubameyang, Lacazette, Pepe, you've got 33 goals between them. Granite Jacket looks like he's in. It could be a mix of Good and old and younger and experienced and not that might just be give Arsenal more of a chance than people say. I think they had a great one at the end of the season. I think one of the, yeah. the last five games, yeah. which people didn't didn't really pick mm -hmm. up on. And I know they ended up finishing eighth, but the second half of the season Rob, was much better yes. for Arsenal. Yeah, it was a sudden, sneaky good. It was a yeah. sneaky good second half of the season, Rob. I think didn't we did we think did a sorry, did a graphic in the studio of like yeah. From they were like they were the top three from January yeah. or something like that. No, again, yeah, they, no. they aren't anywhere near finished yet, but they did mm. did improve a lot towards the second half of the season. Albert Lokonga, midfield player mm. from Anderlecht, recommended by yeah. uh, Vincent Company, the manager of Anderlecht. Company, yeah. And I, and I, I looked at some clips of him, Rob, in pre season for Arsenal. Only one, isn't he? Yeah. And he looks like he can play a little bit. Central midfield yeah. player tries to tries mm. to find the little four passes. It looks pretty good. Again, youngster. So, I, yeah. then White, 23, isn't he? Tavares, yeah. young. So, I kind of like the way they're going here, Rob, because I think it's proving mm. that, you know, unless you've got crazy flipping rich owners <clears throat> or states or whatever running your teams, it's going to yeah. be really hard to, 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 to mm. kind of match that in the transfer market. So, they're going for good young players that, that might uh, – do their thing. No European football, the manager said, is no. going to help them on the training ground. Yeah, a bit of a focus, yeah. Arte Arteta, uh, he's definitely said that. Mm. Um, I just think from now, Rob, and, and uh, Stan Kroenke and, and that group that runs the club and owns the club, I think we said that they need to they need to show us the money or show Arsenal yeah. fans the money. There's been a little yeah. bit of that in Ben White and there needs to be a bit more, Rob. They need, mm. you know, Odegaard looks like he could, not sure he's going to come back. No, no. So bias is a, uh, yeah. You know, I know I know Smith Rowe can play number ten, mm. and I know uh, Lacazette and Aubameyang. I feel they need another attacking player, Rob. And and mm. this is oh, going to talk be... about Madison. Haven't there? There's been a lot of talk yeah. about Madison, possibly, and and that's a kind of and I get Can't the profile great. a little bit less money, a little bit younger. You're taking a bit of a gamble, you know, category B, but we're going to develop them. And I think that's exciting for Arsenal fans yeah. to, to see that kind of player. But they have got to make steps and. and I think the, the the free pass is kind of up for Mikel Arteta. I think he's got to start to stand by what his plan is and what he starts to do with this team. Yeah, I don't I don't know if I'm quite so definitive yet, Rob. I still feel he's in the middle of this transition, and I think the improvement of the second half of the season, some young yeah. players have come in. I don't I mm. don't think it's like well, you've got to be you know you've got to be knocking on no, the door. No, no, I'm not saying forward. they've got to be knocking on the on the door, but I think we've got to start seeing the progression, the consistency. We've got to start. Seem that you know you, you go back to Jurgen Klopp and Jurgen Klopp in the early days you know lost finals and and and, and yeah. work his way but you yeah, saw a development of a football mm -hmm. club towards something I think yeah. that's what we've got to see with Mikel Arteta the progression yeah. towards getting back to challenging and being in Europe and also just finally for me on Arsenal Rob a couple of players that you know we talk about the young players and, and yeah. developing areas of this team. Aubameyang's got to get back yeah. to his best, Rob. He's got to get back yeah. to 22 That's goals. Right. Yeah, and and I would say as well, a player that I haven't always appreciated, Nicola Pepe. Yeah. I thought he showed more signs in the last kind of dozen games of the Premier League season of what yeah. he can do. If Aubameyang ten goals he got best, in the end, Rob. Yeah, ten and, goals. And, yeah, goals. and if Pepe can can, can work on that again, a young player, Pepe, then there could be some better times ahead for Arsenal. Yeah. But I, you know, yeah. it's. Uh, yeah, tough job, but yeah. I, I think it's looking all right. The experienced players have to help some of these kids come yeah. through in this transition. And if so, you know, could, could be better times ahead for, yeah. for Arsenal. So, 
we went back to our, our friends at Points Best Sports Book and asked them about odds of any of these teams breaking into the top four. So we're talking about Arsenal, Leicester and Tottenham. And this was how they saw it. Arsenal at plus 450. Leicester at plus 450. Spurs just outside that at plus 500. Hmm. So they see Arsenal and Leicester with a better chance of breaking that top four than, than Spurs. But there isn't an awful lot in it from, from no. either side. And, I, and I'm struggling to, to, to see who I put my money on. Hmm. I tend to go yeah, Leicester. I don't know. Yeah, probably I just think. Leicester. Yeah, but I just Arsenal. manager, yeah. depth of player, possibly more yeah. top. But yeah, listen, it, it, it's not an easy one, and, and certainly, you know, both those big North London clubs have got to establish themselves again. And Rob, all the, you know, yeah. One of my notes with with, with Arsenal and Spurs are you've got to be careful about keep saying big six, big six. You, you don't look and feel like a big six team at the moment. Question number three, Robbie. Let's move it on. Ooh. Which club are you most excited for outside the big seven? I guess we're including Leicester in that and the six that you've talked yeah. about. So others, yeah. really, Rob. Again, a little bit down the league now. Which okay. club, given what's happening in the summer, are you Others. you excited about? Excited, Orange. Excited about what Leeds United look like on the second season. I'm excited. Yeah. I, I read so. I, as ever, we start doing a bit of research, did a bit of reading. So, um, Marcel Bielsa was unable to travel back to Argentina through COVID. So, apparently, he spent every day in the training ground <laughs> working on new systems of play, players' prevention of injuries, fitness, and uh, nutrition. Apparently, he's had all these staff in, he's had all these people, that's all he's been doing. This guy is just a, is an anorak around football. So, I'm looking forward to what Leeds can become. There's absolutely no doubt of second season syndrome. I think nope. knowing what they know, he said a brilliant thing that is just total Bielsa, which I thought summed him up, where he said, it's interesting that people said, we're not going to be a surprise package. We're going to know, uh, uh, people are going to know about them. Mm. He said, we know more about the opposition than we did before. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and we'll know how to hurt them as well, which is yeah. just typical brilliant Bielsa. Just a few facts and figures, Rob, for them. Uh, signings, they've secured the signing, permanent sign of Jack Harrison. Junior mm. Furpo from Barcelona, left back. Yeah, Excited. Left back, yeah. Really yeah. good, really good pickup. Uh, Alioski's left, I think, and Pablo Hernandez is left. Yeah, he's going a to. A couple of other things on them. There's a new pitch been installed, Rob. One of the newer, yeah. um, the hybrid pitches with the mm -hmm. synthetic and the grass, I think, because they had a problem, didn't they? They had to relay their grass field. Yeah, during the season, yeah. <clears throat> and, and we have to mention Saturday... 7.30 Eastern time, they play Man United, Rob, at Old Trafford. Now, again, people might not know some of our, like, the rivalry between these two yeah. sets of fans. Man United and, Le and Leeds hate each other. And, mm. of course, fans back this season, you know, we haven't seen anything yet until you've seen the game at Ellen Road. Again, I think this is Old Trafford. But yeah, so Leeds Old Trafford, United, yeah, yeah. Having fans back at yeah. Ellen Road, people will start to see on our, on our broadcast, Rob, what Leeds yeah. United is all yeah, about. We'll and what it, yeah, we'll follow yeah. uh, club it is with that fan base. And let's not forget last season, United ran all over and beat them 6-2. Do you remember at, at Old Trafford? Yeah. One, one of the great days. And then they ran them out of midfield and created spaces. And, and Yeah, they did really well. Ain't, yeah, ain't going to let that happen again. And so they got to be ready. Say, United have to be the same, Rob. Yeah, yeah. Leeds will be ready, will be, will be, ready to yeah. go. Yeah. Revved up and ready to go. So that, so that excites me. Have, yeah. have you got one in there that... that excites you or interests you well, with, with I, I, I think teams? i think it, of exciting i think that's probably the pick rob i'm looking at west ham mm. united right as the next team to look at finished sixth last season and yeah i'd love to be excited for them but i just think it's going to be a tougher year this year rob jesse lingard mm. doesn't look at the moment no that he's going to be going back though that of course could shame, change in the transfer yeah, window so no jesse lingard that come on and did a did a great mm. uh great a great job for them i mean in terms of signings nothing Ariola. Goalkeeper on loan from yeah. PSG. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Fabio Babuena left as well, looks like, from, from West Ham United. I just, in Devon Moyes signed a new three year contract. Yeah. Totally yeah. deserved of what, what they've done. Mm. Just a quick question, Rob, to throw it back to you is like, fans back in the stadium, has David Moyes now earned the respect? Is he, yeah. is he, yeah. is he going to get a so. warm reception? I think so, mate. I, I've got West Ham fan, friends who were fans who were always a little bit reluctant to, to praise or a little bit reluctant to, to uh, open up to them. But I think he's, he's in respect. I think through the pandemic, I think the way he's handled himself, 
the way he's united that football club through a difficult time, from ownership through to players, through to staff, through to performances, yeah. uh, I think he's earned the right. Now, I think they'll get behind him. I think it'd be good. It'd be good for him, and it'd be good for him to hear that and feel that real um, West Ham love because it's a special club and they're a great set of fans when they get behind, get behind the team. Is there any part of you, and there is a part of me, I've got to be honest, mm. that even after that, if they don't off, get off to a great start and the football doesn't quite roll the mm. same, mm. could it could it turn a little bit? Or am I just being a nasty I, 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 Yeah, I don't, I don't think... I, I, see the, I see the glass being half full and I see that there's a consistency, there's a work rate, there's, 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 there's some data points that you know are going to happen with with West Ham it didn't happen before which David Moyes installed at Everton which you kind of know now what, what West Ham you know a bit more what West Ham are going to be they could do with a, a striker for sure I mean they're doing all this you know Antonio 10 goals Suchek 10 goals could do with a striker they let Ilaire, Ilaire go and didn't bring anybody in mm. if they could bring a striker in there and then with all what they get Ben Rama and yeah. Bowen and people yeah. around yeah. They, they, they the yeah, Suchek, yeah Suchek, back, 10 goals Talk about Zuma possibly coming in late on. So yeah. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm still positive on, on David Moyes. In, in Moyes, we trust. Quick line on Everton, mate, because yeah. um, Rafa Benitez in Everton. Mm. <laughs> Is that a match made in heaven? Hang on a minute. Carlo Ancelotti. What, that, that was the quickest exit Bye. ever, wasn't it? Bye. Like, Bye. Like, have we spoke to our, of our listeners before? I mean, that like wow, yeah, that no, happened that quick. Was, that, that, that was happened really quick. quick. I mean... Um, I mean I was assuming Angelotti, I think everybody felt this is a long-term appointment. He's building something at the football club. Um, you know, the new stadium's coming. He's going to be part of the whole growth. And then Oscar. Real Madrid came along, smiled yeah. and winked, and, and off he's his All right, choice of Rafa Benitez. Controversial, Robbie. We all know about his, his status at Liverpool Football Club, yeah. the red part of Liverpool. And he's kind of a legend there, really. Mm. There is going to be a section of fans that will never accept this no, no. I, i'm gonna say this i think i think it's a good appointment and i think given time given patience and given a good start will he get patience no will he get time and well, patience he won't. No, he won't. No, he so, won't. he's got no credit mm, yeah bank. i yeah, get that yeah. that's why i'm saying it kind of needs a decent start i just think yeah, that he's absolutely he's, yeah. he's done well before with, with, with yeah. big clubs that, that mm. not always but for the most part um and it's not, he possibly isn't going to be a popular appointment. I just think he could do well. He'll get some money from the The start yeah. is key for, for Rafa. If he can yeah. get a half decent start and get in and around seven, eight or something and, and be around it, I think yeah. he'll get, as you say, the, the time to develop it. And they'll be difficult to play against. They'll be well up drilled. And he can, there's forward players who can play there. If he mm. gets off to a bad start, Rob, three or four games, four or five games. I mean, they finished terribly, by the way, Everton. And they've not had a brilliant pre-season either, yeah. I've heard. I mean, it, I it just could, think they get some structure. Nasty quickly. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I just think he's going to give a structure. I mean, we know the football's going to be a little bit more pragmatic. Mm. But again, Everton fans, just 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 bear with it. Because again, mm. I, I think he could, uh, he could do a pretty good job. All right, Rob, let's move on. By the way, we've got to apologise. We can't hit every single no, club. No, no. There's, there's a bit of filler in there. What they're going to be like without Greenish uh, and Buendia and Ings and Bailey in. Could be oh, exciting, yeah, could. I think, for Villa, you know, by the way. I don't think it's doom and gloom just because Jack's gone. Good way, of, good way of replacing his attributes. Yeah. With also, different... with Danny Ings, and you've got mm. the creativity of Buendia and, and Leon yeah. Bailey, this exciting Bailey, wide yeah. player. So, yeah. that's, the, that's the way to use the money. Mm. And, and they've got, they've between those players, they can hopefully get the numbers and the production that, that Jack Grealish gave them. But uh, yeah. all right. Question number four, my friend is which club or clubs are you most interested in, in the bottom half of the mm -hmm. Premier League? The others, mate, the other others. The, the, the other others. Um, yeah. My go-to has to be Brentford Football Club, Rob. Oh yeah. 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 Just because of, I think last season when Leeds were coming up, I felt Leeds will bring something to the Premier League. Brentford, my friend, will bring something to the Premier League. They got a bit of a bit of a cray cray manager, to be honest, Thomas Frank. He, he's he's all out there, tells it as it is. They play an aggressive way of football. They've got a passionate way of doing it. They're they're built on stats and data. They've got a fascinating kind of backroom staff and coaching staff and and setup and and, and, owner, and the owner and the owner was a former mm -hmm. gambler who's looks at numbers and stats. I mean, it's a brilliant story. Yeah. And the one thing I'll say, Rob, is 
they'll bring something to the Premier League. And I'm going to shout, put it out there now. Some of their players will be suited to the Premier League and they will not go, they will not be relegated. Mm. Yeah, I, I, I tend to agree on, on the, the euphoria of that brand new little stadium, Rob, and what mm. that means. I've, I've been there. I've been in a team that got promoted into a new stadium. The excitement, it absolutely drives you. It, it, it drove us to Christmas and we mm. ended up having a good season. In fact, we tanked in the second half of the season, but we stayed up. So I, I think it's a, it's a really good, really good story, Rob. Um, other than that, you know, I think the story of some of these clubs is worry. It's worry. And I don't want to be doom and I don't want to... That's you. That's I know. You, well, let me get let me throw some names at you. And one of them okay. needs a bit more chat. Southampton. Mm. Losing Ralph, Danny Ing. In, in Ralph we trust. Come on, Ralph. Oh, Danny Ings has gone. It looks like Vestergaard. Yeah. I just watched on the on the wires the news today. He could be going as well. I think they could be in, in, in danger, Rob, uh, of staying in the division. Now they got Adam Armstrong, isn't it? They've they brought a new striker. From the yeah, yeah, they're both from Blackburn. Yeah, school goals Blackburn. at Blackburn. Goal so, goals, actually, yeah. So, so that's the yeah, guy that yeah. needs to... Adams needs to score more goals he got yeah. last year. I worry about them. And, uh, oh, gosh. Crystal Palace, Rob. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let you get going on Crystal Palace. Patrick Vieira. I mean, Vieira. Whoa. Whoa. Oh, gosh. So, you, you well, well, what we've done from, from... What Palace have done is gone from secure... <laughs> solid, know what we're going to get, Roy Hodgson, to star appeal, young, bright coach who is going to bring something different and is going to want the ball, wants possession of the ball, wants to keep it, wants to build it, wants to give a platform for the players oh, to express blimey. themselves. The total yeah. opposite of what Roy Hodgson was about. I, 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 I'm thinking and hearing, and, and you know, I've got a couple of friends at Palace. I mean, good things from the training, good reports from what the players are feeling back. I'm in. I'm in, I'm in Patrick Scan. Oh, yeah. I'm I in, just I'm think, Rob, Scan. isn't this a, a very big gamble? And other people that I haven't got, uh, I think it was Nuno very close to, to agreeing yeah, it. Yeah, it was Nuno. Was Nuno. Lucien Favre yeah. Uh, yeah, was Favre, very yeah. close and walked away at the last moment. Down, yeah. Another one, you know, a little bit like Nuno at Spurs, like, all oh, right, then who are we going to get? Patrick Vieira. Too many changes, Rob. Different manager, different style of play, and tons of different players. The steady yeah, That was going to happen lives. anyway, wasn't it? All the, all the players yeah. and the other things. All happened, saying, so. Are you okay with the manager changing, the style changing, and those play players well, changing? The manager was going to change. Roy, Roy was, was done from the end of last season. I think last four or five games, I think it was almost being put out there. So it's whether it's what I think the point for me, Rob, it's whether, you know, was an Eddie Howe, is an Eddie Howe a better choice? Is, was the Sean Dyche go and try and get one of them a better choice? Somebody who's been in the league, knows yes. the league, has won yeah, absolutely. the league, you know, been yeah, absolutely. Patrick, who in fairness has been at Nice and got sacked, you know, been in uh, uh, over in New York, kept yeah, FC, yeah. Did, 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 did a good job. Did, yeah. But, yeah, you know, is he going to inspire some of these players, the Eze's, the Will Zahars, the and some of the young talent? I think he's got this Elise kid in. Yeah, We've got, um, yeah. yeah um, Connor, Connor, thing from Chelsea. Yeah, yeah some good Connor young. Yeah. yeah. So uh, is, 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 is Patrick one of them who can inspire? You know, Maybe. Ben Teki, Can he? Can he? Can he yeah. get something more out of them than some of the others? I think yes. it's interesting. I think it's interesting. I think it's, interesting. I mean, it's a challenge for Patrick, but I think it's a good challenge. I mean, one that he should be embracing and one that he needs to do well as well. I'll look at it and his reputation's on the line here, by the way. Yeah. This is this I mean, is a legend, that, legendary yeah. foot, legendary player, but now yeah. are you gonna be a are you gonna be a, a top class manager? Wolves, Bruno Large, Portuguese manager, follows mm. Nuno Espirito Santo. I think their first game was against Spurs or second yeah. game, or maybe the first game. Um Again, I'm a little worried about them. Raul Jimenez, of course, we know is a top yeah. class, a really, really good level Premier League striker. We mm -hmm. know about his, his his fractured skull. He's been playing preseason, Rob. And we, I, you know, yeah. we all pray that he gets back. If he gets back and he's he, and he gets back to his best of scoring goals, that's, Adama Troy. That's, that's a gift. That's a gift. Yeah, it's a gift. Him. And Troy, if he stays, which is a bit of talk yeah. about him leaving, um, they should be okay. But that again, like like Southampton, like Crystal mm. Palace, mm. you know, there's there's quite a few teams that all yeah. like kind of. We'll, we'll build with you, all right? Will we'll, we'll the Ginger Mourinho steer them to today? Well, you know what, Rob? I mean, I they're, 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 they're a bit slim this year. There's not a lot going on at the moment. 
Well, always. I tipped him for relegation last year, and mm. they proved me wrong. Just about didn't have a great yeah, season. Yeah, they, they had a bad run. They had a bad start. Yeah. I'm yeah. just in, in in prepping for this weekend, Rob. I've just gone mm. through their last couple of lineups, uh, and it's the same team. Yeah. And everybody's playing again. Too, isn't it? Yeah. So yeah. you know, I think Ben, me, and Tarkovsky weren't yeah. fit, and they had a terrible start. So for that reason, yeah. and because Chris Wood he gets his twelve goals. I think they're going to be okay again, but I, I, I'm like, they shouldn't be. The age, they're all like 20. I think there's like, again, I think there's 15 of the squad, Rob, and I haven't got my exact notes with me. 15 of the squad are 29 or older. Mm. It's a really old group yeah. that keeps But it's know how, in it? Yeah, it's, it's know how. It's yeah. just know how and getting enough to 40 points. They'll yeah. start the season, which somebody said it's their fifth season, I think the fifth season in the league now on the bounce. The first thing they say is 40 points. They can't get away from yeah. that. Well, it comes, yeah. You know, and yeah. that's that's gonna be, be be the challenge. But as you say, Newcastle, I'm I'm feeling a bit more comfortable about Newcastle. I think they'll be okay. I think Steve Bruce got yeah. over the worst. Willock coming in is a decent signing. Callum Wilson being fit, I think it, it is a big bonus. And obviously the the uh, promoted teams, Norwich yeah. and, and Watford, Watford is always a challenge, isn't it? It's always a challenge for well, particularly for Norwich. You know, mm. I think they've done a little bit more in the transfer market, Rob. But again, their philosophy is, and we'll keep yeah. saying it because it's an amazing yeah. quote. Stuart Webber, the director of football, said of Norwich, we aim to be in the top 24 teams in England. Mm. So basically, in the Premier League. I, I hate that saying. Or in the top four of the championship, as if like, it's that's okay. Problems. And I, I, I get it. it. It's but, okay. It's okay. I just, I wouldn't want to be associated with a club if that's the, the, the thing for yeah, me, Rob. You, yeah, I, yeah. I, I want to yeah. be in the top 20. Yeah. Top 20. And what yeah. we'll see. I mean, what have been up and down and accept it if they do. Munoz, who's in charge there, um, plays mm. a slightly different system, I believe, because a little bit away from the 4 4 2. They didn't have uh, Troy Deeney a lot last season. Apparently, some good young players have been brought through. So we know with that football club, and, and Ismail Asar is, is still involved. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, I think they, they can have their days. It's whether they can have enough of those good days. Can they put their, what Steve Bruce wants to tell us, 10 wins and, and yeah. 10 draws? Keeps you in yeah. the league. Yeah, I think uh, it'd be interesting. I, I looked again, Robert, their transfers in. I mean, there's so mm. many. <laughs> so, yeah. They've signed yeah. like 10, they've signed a ton of players. Mm. Uh, this Cisco Moon, uh, Munoz is, um, I, I, I watched an interview towards the end of last yeah. season. What a lovely, lovely bloke he is. Mm. And he's really, yeah. really popular at the football club with the fans, with the players. Yeah. He's just one of them that, mm. uh, that in fact, I, th I just think about it, Rob, the three promoted managers. I don't think you're, you'll ever have a, a nicer three guys. Yeah. yeah. Thomas Frank at Brentford. You know, Daniel Farco is the loveliest yeah. guy in the world. And I think uh, Cisco is the same thing at, at Watford. So, yeah, I just, does, it's really does hard. Lovely, to does lovely keep you off? Well, does I don't lovely care. They're, they're, lovely, they're lovely guys. And you, you were saying that, Oli Gunnar Solskjaer is a lovely guy. Well, yeah, with the, <laughs> different. This is yeah. different area of the heat table. Going back to so, listen. Let's get Give to the uh, the yeah. odds to, to to relegation because obviously this is 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 you know what top end of the table is always important, but that bottom three is is a lifeline. And it goes like this, my friend: Norwich minus one hundred and twelve, Watford plus one hundred, Brentford plus one hundred and ten, oh. Palace plus one hundred and seventy-five. Wow. Burnley plus 240 in Sean Dyke, just no chance. Newcastle plus 270. Wolves plus 450. Yeah. Southampton plus 450. Mm. Brighton yeah. plus 650. Yeah. Villa plus 700. Villa uh, no. down. Leeds no, plus 1,000. No, no. West Ham plus 1,000. So, it, 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 you know, it, it's circling around Norwich at minus 112. Watford plus 100. Brentford plus 110. Palace plus one seven five and Burnley probably plus two forty. Points bet. Our, mm. our, our, our partner's points bet. Not feeling your Patrick Vieira love, mate. Not not feeling that. They're going to be embarrassed by that. By the way, they'll be wow. embarrassed. Believe me. Believe me. Uh, Brentford right plus one hundred and ten. No chance they are now. No chance. Brighton at six fifty is worth a little couple of dollars. Southampton at plus 450, probably worth a couple Graham of dollars. Potter. Graham Potter is the best English coach oh, in the God. country, said Pep Guardiola. Oh, They're not blimey. Going They're not going down. Oh, okay, so there's your odds for, for relegation. Um, final question, Rob, and it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's, a, it's a lovely question. How important will the return of the fans be this season, my friend? How, how much are we looking it, forward to this? It is everything, mate. I mean, it, we have seen 18 months, and there's been eight months of, of, of great work by the Premier League, 
to get the games on, to, to finish seasons, to get trophies, to, you know, get all the European positions and the up and It's been a brilliant job to get it on without no fans in the stadium. Yeah. But it's not been the real deal. It's not mm. been Premier League football as we know, not, as we've played, mm. as we've watched, as we've been to games, as we've, we've seen. And just getting those fans back in there brings all the emotion, all the reaction, anticipation, noise, all the things that make football unique. You play Manchester United against Leeds, there's hatred between the two clubs, the Red Rose and the White Rose, and they've had this history going on. And without fans, it, it's, it's something you talk about. With fans, I guarantee you, you will see it this week on, on Saturday. You mm. will see it in, mm. in the set of fans at, at the ground. And how that affects the players, Rob. Mm. So you this mm. same fixture without fans. Yeah. They don't. The, the, this foreign players, they don't know, understand it, but the fans mm. make them understand it. Yeah. And when you've got whatever is going to be thousands, 40, 50, 60, 70,000 people streaming, then they're going to know about it. So you're going to see different games, different level of intensity with fans there. Um, just the sa- the sounds, the, the, the singing, the mm. reaction we get in the when you see the camera shots with the fans, etc. The celebration from players towards the fans. Oh, the, in some ways, that you know, it's not a great part of the game, Rob. But the you know, the stick, the booing of, of yeah, managers, the, the challenges, players. the fouls, the red cards, yeah. the off, the pressure on referees, everything. Oh. Throw it all into the mix. This VAR, VAR, yeah. yeah, a few changes yeah, there, which I think are going to yeah. make it better. Anyway, mate, we can't go on forever. Looking forward to it. So, well, <laughs> good thing is, mate, we're back. Forty-eight hours with a big kickoff. Brentford hosting Arsenal on Friday night special. Look out for our next podcast. That's going to be on Sunday, August the 15th, when we'll have a full and detailed recap of all the opening matches from the weekend. So it's just two sleeps to go. So we'll see you at the weekend. But for now, I'm Earl. He's must go together with the two Robbies. Thanks for watching and listening. Be safe. Stay healthy. It is good to be back, my friend. It's a good night from me. And it's good night from him. Good night. Good night. <laughs>